Hi, this is Tim Hodges with a short video on the rank nullity theorem, one of the most important theorems from the early parts of abstract linear algebra. So let's go straight into the theorem. So the theorem is about linear transformations between finite dimensional vector spaces. Though, in principle, the image space W doesn't have to be finite dimensional. So let's let V be a finite dimensional vector space and let L from V to W be a linear transformation. Then the rank nullity theorem says that the dimension of the kernel of this map, uh, the nullity, plus the dimension of the image, the rank, is equal to the dimension of the domain V. Let's uh, recall uh, what we're talking about here. If L is a linear transformation, the kernel is the set of V in the domain, capital V, such that L of V is equal to zero. And the image is the usual image of a function from one set to another. It's just the set of things of the form L of V, where V is in the domain. And a very elementary lemma tells us that these two things are both uh, subspaces. The kernel is a subspace of the domain V, and the image is a subspace of W. I won't prove this lemma. It's an easy exercise. So let's move on and look at the proof of this theorem. So V is finite dimensional, so let's let N be its dimension. The kernel is a subspace of V, and V is finite dimensional, so the kernel is also finite dimensional. So it has a basis, uh, say, V1 up to VR. Since this basis for the kernel, V1 up to VR, is linearly independent as a subset of V, there's a result that tells us that we can extend it to a basis of V. So let's extend it up to a basis, V1, all the way up to Vn now. So our main claim in this proof is that the set L of Vr plus 1 up to L of Vn form a basis for the image of L. Let's see why that proves the theorem we're trying to prove. If this is true, then the dimension of the image is the number of elements in this basis, which is n minus r. And then the kernel, of, the dimension of the kernel plus the dimension of the image is r plus n minus r, which is, of course, n, and that's the dimension of v. So this is all we have to prove, that this, this set of elements here form a basis for the image. Of course, there are two things to prove whenever we want to show that something's a basis. We have to show, firstly, that it spans the set, and secondly, that it's linearly independent. So let's start off with the spanning claim. We need to show that this set of elements spans the image. In other words, that any element can be expressed, any element in the image can be expressed as a linear combination of these elements. So let's start off with an element in the an arbitrary element in the image. Let's call it W. Then by the definition of the image, we can write W as L of V for some V and capital V. Now, because V1 up to Vn is a basis for V, we can write this element little v as a linear combination. So A1 V1 up to A N V N. Now let's apply L to that. So W, remember, is L of V. So that's L of this long linear combination. But of course, because L is a linear transformation, L applied to a linear combination is the corresponding combination of the L of the Vs. So L of V is A1, L of V1, one plus dot, 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 An, L of Vn. But now let's look at these first terms here. The V1 up to Vr are in the kernel. 
So L of V1, L of V2, up to L of VR are all zero. So we can replace these first terms by zeros. And then rewriting that, we get that W is AR plus one, L of VR plus one, plus dot, 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 plus AN, L of VN. So what have we shown? We've shown that any element of the image is expressible as a linear combination of these elements, which is exactly the statement that these elements span the image of L. So that's the third, first part of the proof. The second part is to show that they're linearly independent. So how do we do this? Well, we take a linear combination and we try to prove that if that linear combination is equal to zero, then all the coefficients have to be equal to zero. So suppose there exist elements BR plus one up to BN in our base field K, such that uh, BR plus one, L of VR plus one plus BN, L of VN is equal to zero. What does that tell us? Well, because L is a linear transformation, this linear combination of the Ls is the same as L applied to the linear combination of the Vs. So that tells us that L of BR plus one, VR plus one plus BN, VN is equal to zero, which is exactly the statement that this linear combination is in the kernel. But now we have a basis for the kernel, V1 up to VR. So this element, because it's in the kernel, is expressible as a linear combination of the V1 up to the VR. So there exist some other elements, possibly B1 up to BR in K, such that uh, this element here is equal to B1 V1 plus, plus BR VR. What does this say? Well, this is a linear dependence relationship between the V1 up to VN. But this set, V1 up to VN, is a basis for the bigger space V. It's certainly linearly independent, so the only way we can have a relationship like this holding is if all the BIs are zero. In particular, the BR plus one up to BN all have to be zero. So what have we proved? We've proved that if we have such a linear combination of the L of VIs being equal to zero, then the coefficients all have to be zero. That's exactly the statement that this set is linearly independent. So we've proved the set is linearly independent and that it spans the image. So this set forms a basis for the image of L. So now we can wrap up the theorem. As I said before, this tells us that the dimension of the image of L is n minus r. And that tells us that the dimension of the kernel plus the dimension of the image is equal to R plus N minus R, which is equal to N, the dimension of V. So we've proved the rank nullity theorem. So now you should close out of the video, sit down and rewrite this proof for yourself. You'll find that it's very easy and once you've done it once or twice, you'll probably never forget how to prove the rank nullity theorem. Thanks for listening and join me again soon for another discussion of abstract linear algebra.